So, Sheriff, I first just want to ask you, I mean, what do you know about a possible investigation into your department? Well, you probably know what you know, because you read it in the paper, and that's how I know about it. Um, you know, I, I think back in November, um, Ms. Schmidt had talked to us and, and done an investigative report on our cafeteria. Uh, she reported a number of flaws in our procurement process that we hope to have corrected. We're still working on some things, permits at the jail, those types of things. This was all done prior to me getting here, but we, we recognize that, yeah, we made some missteps and we're taking care of that. When it comes to an FBI investigation, um, I was taken back by that as much as anybody. Here's an agency who um, for years has been known to uh, deny or acknowledge or anything about any kind of investigation. They're famous for that. And yet they confirm Miss Caitlin's sources to her, I'm told. And that I'm told by Miss Miss Kate Schmidt that she called me a couple of days ago and said, uh, hey, what do you know about this FBI investigation? I says, well, why are you asking me about an FBI investigation? You should be asking them. It's their investigation. And she says, well, I did. I said, well, what did they tell you? She says, well, they confirmed what my sources have told me. I said, well, that's nice. So have you been no. interviewed by the FBI? Absolutely not, no. Uh, Andy Black from their, their, their director for Tucson office talked to me in December. And at that time, the conversation was so benign he led me to believe there wasn't an investigation. In fact, it was more along the lines of, of fatherly advice about um, things that had nothing to do with this. It was, it was, it was almost a bizarre conversation I had with them, but never anything about investigation. And then in January, I got word from one of my employees who said the FBI interviewed me. Um, and so that's when I called Mr. Black out, the director here, and said, What's up, Andy? Are you doing an investigation or not? And now he tells me, well, it's just a preliminary investigation. So I don't know what the difference between a preliminary and criminal. You'd have to ask the FBI. But I know that once Caitlin called me, I spoke to the FBI and I let him know pretty much how unhappy I was for the, the you know, I, I think I told you, Ms. Schmidt should be on the FBI's payroll. She's done a better job investigating this case than the FBI has. The FBI's had it for 30, 90, uh, since November, 90 days, and, and they've interviewed three employees. They've not asked for any records. Ms. Schmitz asked for all of our financial records. We gladly gave them to her. We cooperated fully with that. We, we mis recognized our missteps. Was there a violation of some obscure law, as others have said, some procurement law? It's a civil process where we messed up, uh, messed up on a procurement issue where we didn't have um, those with disability get first shot at a contract? Yep, we probably did. We, we, we admit to that. Our mistake. Was there disability um, vending machines already placed here? Absolutely. We already had them. They were here. They've been offered the jail. They've even since then been offered here and they still turned it down. So all of those things, those <laughs> questions um, that were produced by Ms. Schmidt, to me, we've resolved. In terms of the uh, FBI investigation of RICO funds, well, that's just crazy. We have access, absolutely, and Mr. Black knows this, we have no access to RICO funds, never have. It goes through the county attorneys. When you want RICO dollars, and oh, by the way, we don't buy binoculars, and I got, when I came in office, I said, enough of that, we've got enough stuff. So we bought some tasers, okay, good. It's appropriate expense for RICO. But I have to look at our RICO dollars and go, it should be put back into this community where it really has an impact on crime, on, on substance abuse, and things of that nature. So we look at those nonprofits who, who and I, I actually showed up at the door of youth on their own because I heard about them. And I showed up at their door and said, why aren't you guys applying? This is a great organization who, who does some great things with our kids. Kids who are on the street homeless or taken away by the courts have nowhere to go, and they make them stay in school. 97% success rate. That's who I'd rather see my RICO dollars go to. Programs like Amistadis, LULAC, um, uh, Youth on Their Own, uh, YWCA, several of them. We've given, uh, since I've been in office, over $150,000 to those types of programs. But they're programs that are designed to help our kids stay out of jail. So your department has never used RICO dollars for either of these cafeterias? Cafes. No. 
not to my knowledge at all. We thought we had. I think that when she, in her article, she mentioned that uh, Captain Janes, who was new at the time as a down there, mentioned to her that the refrigerators were purchased with RICO dollars and that there was some $20,000 purchase. Well, the refrigerator was $4,000 and we thought, as he did, that it was RICO dollars. We checked with our downtown procurement office, who, oh, by the way, also oversees our purchases, and they said, no, it was general fund money. Okay, so he misspoke. Oh, we're hiding something very nefarious of us. See, we did this cafeteria thing based on nothing more than a desire to help our staff. That's all it was. Trying to do the right thing for the right reasons, not worrying about doing things right, black and white. Okay, I get it, sometimes we have to do that just for appearance, but this office has always been transparent, always. We have given Caitlin every document she's asked. She even asked for documents that when we gave them to her, she said, why did I want this? I, I don't know, Caitlin, but you asked for it, so we're gonna give it to you. We would give you everything you want, any other documents you want, all of those. The FBI hasn't come by and asked for any of those documents. They've not asked for, hey, can we see your procurement policies or procedures? Could we see your RICO policies and procedures? Could we see your expenditures for RICO? Could we see your expenditures for procurement? You see that? But yet they've had it for three months and interviewed three employees. Yeah, I, I really am, if I'm upset at anybody, I'm upset at the FBI. You confirm something that you never confirm. I understand the paper said, Ms. Schmidt, Schmidt put in her article that they didn't confirm it but I know she told me they did. So I'm guessing that she probably got confirmation off the record. Well, that's inappropriate too. No matter what the story is, the FBI to me has better things to do. If they don't, then come out and, and, and ask us what you can do. Two weeks ago, we had their corruptions unit call my internal affairs and say, we're slow. There's nothing going on, do you have anything for us? Well, if I'm managing a case that I think is that critical and important where I'm involving a law enforcement agency, one of the largest ones under my jurisdiction, I think that's pretty critical. I think that's pretty important. And I would turn to my staff and say, and I do, because we investigate cases for other agencies, and I say, it's important to them. So you get it done and do it completely, thoroughly, and oh, by the way, timely. 90 days, three interviews of employees who, for all I know, are just upset it for some reason, but nothing more. No request for records, no request for financial stuff, no, no talk to the sheriff, nothing. So yeah, am I upset at the FBI? Absolutely. They, should, they, they, they get by with saying no comment. Who does that in today's world? Who does that? Yet they get by with that. And when this thing's all resolved and the case is all over, I challenge them. I challenge Mr. Black to stand up to that camera by himself and say, we have looked at this investigation and we have exonerated, completely find this investigation to be total BS, because that's what it is. But you won't hear that, because they won't confirm or deny. So did you reach out, you might have mentioned this, but did you reach out to them after this story was published? I reached out to them, what is today's Friday, uh, no, Caitlin told me she was writing the story. In fact, I told Caitlin, I, I want her to write the story. I want her to quote me that I think the FBI, if they are having problems doing criminal investigations, please call us because we have real policemen here. We'll, we'll do that for you because obviously they can't get it done. So you're upset that they went, you know, and confirmed this to mm -hmm. a news agency Absolutely. instead of coming to you? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'm upset at that and I'm upset at the inappropriateness of their investigative efforts and they are inappropriate. So, I mean, as far as you're concerned, do you think the department has done anything wrong? No, do we make some mistakes here? Absolutely. Was there anybody here making money and had this criminal intent and nefarious? No. Was, was some of the better decisions to say, okay, this is uh, Chief Bracke's uh, family niece, uh, probably we should look somewhere else? Probably so. But those weren't my decisions. Those were Ch Sheriff Dupnik's decisions. And, and Chief Radke assured him at that time, I don't, I'm out of it. I think she, the truth behind that was simply this. We had, a, we had a contract employee here. The contract employee here was working and we got EEO complaints. We dismissed them. We dismissed that contractor. So we turned around and said, how do we get it filled? It's not easy to get somebody in here because you have to 
first of all, have a background. But when Chris said, you know, I could get my niece, she does a catering service, she'll come in here and tra charge us nothing, I thought, well, we don't want any money for it. I didn't want to make money on the deal. I just wanted to give my employees something cheap, a, a, a decent meal. You see where we're at. You got 20 minutes to get to a restaurant and back and have your food done. It, some places it's not possible. The jail particularly, they're locked in. I have, I have corrections officers who are locked in a pod and the only chance they have is maybe 15 minutes to run downstairs and grab something out of the cafeteria and back up they go. They're not going anywhere for food. So we've shut that operation down. I get it. We're going to go through the right processes. It's just the way things are set up. We don't always like that, but that's what it is. There are rules out there. There's bureaucracy out there. I understand it. I shake my head and go, I, 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 but we still get it done. And we're going to do that in this case. The, 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 the cafe was nothing more than an opportunity to help our staff out. Somebody got this wild idea that, oh, somebody's, somebody's done something wrong here. This is nepotism. You know, we hire hundreds of people here who are fathers, sons, mothers, wives, husbands, all over the department. There, there was nothing here. In fact, Chief Radke said in, in the article, I excused myself from the process once that happened. But then they said, well, he was overseeing it all. He's the, the captain of that division. Why? And, and there was an email showing that he had contact. Well, the email was, after Caitlin found out this, he sent that email up saying, hey, I have washed my hands of it. Well, of course he's going to wash his hands of it because he's overseeing it. He has to. If he was over our criminal investigations division, he could care less. He wouldn't even have to exclude himself for it. He recognized that he was over that area and he couldn't be partaking in it. So it was then given to now my chief of staff, Brad Gagnapane, or Carl Woolrich to handle. Byron Gwaltney, my chief at the jail, handled all the jail procurements. It was just a matter of getting things done for our staff. There was nobody here doing something nefarious and apparently somebody thinks otherwise. Okay, well then investigate it. So I think you said, you know, as far as you know, it's just a preliminary investigation, but I mean, I assume the department is going to work with the FBI if they do want to. Well, we've always worked with them, but you know what, I, I'm, I, I, I asked them yesterday, or was it yesterday, yesterday or the day before, I said yesterday, I, I wanted, I, heck with this preliminary investigation, why are you doing a preliminary investigation? I want the FBI to send this case, take it away from the director here, he's already showed his bias, he is biased on this case. He's already done that, he's shown it, and I'd like them to take it away from here, send it to Phoenix, send it to Washington, D.C., and start a full-blown investigation. I don't want a preliminary. I want a full-blown investigation. Show me where we violated the law, FBI. You and I, if you did anything wrong or you committed something Absolutely. Or I've got all my RICO stats right here waiting to give them to you. Come and get them. Here they, they are. They've been here forever. You can see what, how we, the process is. He knows very well what the process is. Somebody asks for dollars. Amistadis, uh, youth on their own. Why do you say, can I have monies? We do this. Well, well, yeah, sure. I can't reach into my pockets. I don't have that access. Well, you have to fill out some forms and they have to qualify by state law what those statutes are. Or did I say state law? Oh, that's right. The feds are now investigating state crimes. I don't know. But so we, we look at the RICO statutes, we, we give that application they fill out. Do they qualify? We are not making that decision. We send it to the county attorney. Oh, by the way, guess who has access to the funds? Not us, not the county attorney, the county treasurer. So the funds go to, the, the, the process goes to the county attorney's office. They either approve it or deny it. If it's approved, they send all the money here. No. They send the request over to the, county, to the county treasurer and say, these funds have been approved for release to this group. We get notice and we send a letter to the group saying, you've been approved. And the, a check is cut from the county treasurer's office to that group. But it is, it is a process that is monitored and, and handled by the county attorney. And if we're doing it through the state attorney generals, the state attorney general. If we had federal RICO dollars, we would use the feds for that because it's a process we've used all the time and we have every year every year 
We have given reports to the Department of Justice. This is no example of all of our RICO, RICO expenditures. FBI has access to that. So why haven't they looked at that? Nin 90 days and they've done three interviews. If I had a homicide case and I did three interviews in 90 days, we'd do three interviews in 30 minutes. I, last night we had a homicide case we were working and we had three interviews in, in less than a half an hour. They took 90 days to do three interviews on a case that they, they believe is important. Well, if it's so important, why aren't you on it? Get this thing resolved for me. Don't sit there and let it linger and linger and linger so that they just can conveniently do what they want. No, I'm not very happy with the FBI. We've worked with the FBI for, for my career the entire time here. Had a good working relationship, 30, 40 years. Great working relationship. They've been, in, been assigned to this office. We've had staff assigned to that office. And in, what, a 30, 90 days time, we have a new director over there who screwed up that entire relationship as far as I'm concerned. I have no trust in his ability to manage that case or that office. So going back to the, the process for RICO dollars, so hypothetically, if your department wanted to use that money to, say, buy something for a cafeteria, you would have to go through that entire process, Absolutely. Right? And I assume the, Absolutely. County, or the county attorney would probably not approve they, that. Well, if it was approvable, yes, they would. I don't know. Can we buy equipment for, I need a taser. Mm -hmm. Can I buy it? We've done it. It's been approved. It, the, the, the law is that you have to be able to you show that it meets your mission. I am fighting, yes. So you wouldn't be able to just take money from that? No, I can't. I, can, I guess I could buy a process. car for a patrolman or, or I could, um, yeah. You, typically it deals with crime, drugs, rehab. Maybe I've got some, or education, but no. But you'd have to submit an application no Absolutely. matter what you no, want to use it for. No matter what. Okay. I buy a pen, I can't buy that pen until I ask the county attorney. And I would, don't take my word, contact Barbara Wall's office and say, Barbara, how does the RICO process work for you? How do these agencies, because it's not just this agency, all agencies in, under the county attorney's office re send their money to her. She's fun. We get a, I seize dollars. That dollar is immediately, within 24 hours, deposited into the bank at the county's treasurer's office. That, that is now there. We get a court order to either, one, release it back to who we get, took it from, or two, it's yours. You can use it for law enforcement purposes. Mm -hmm. Once that's happened, that court order goes over to the county treasurer. They know what to do with the funds. The county attorney gets a copy of it. Our finance gets a copy of it. Now we know we have X dollars in our account. Somebody asks for, comes and asks for it. We have three or four page form. They have to fill it out. We get that form. We send it to the county attorney's office. They look at the form and says, this doesn't meet it. Sorry. I think we've been denied four or five times, a handful of times for the most part. Some, there's a lot of nonprofits out there who do good things, but they don't necessarily impact the community in, in its crime fighting or its reduction of crime. Um, you know, I ask that they, that they focus on helping youth. If you, can, if you can show me that you're helping the youth of our community, then you can show me, I can draw that, I can draw that nexus, I think. That's, and if I'm wrong, then somebody will tell me. But I think that if I've got young kids out here who aren't graduating high school and they seven times more likely, 70% chance they're going to be in my jail in a day or two, I think I can show that if you're getting these kids through high school and you're taking care of them and you're meeting their needs, I think you could qualify. I'd rather see it go there than I need a, another set of handcuffs. Come on. This is money we've taken from people in the drug world. We, we have tax dollars available to buy uniforms, to buy cars, to buy weapons, to, to deal with those things, to furnish offices. We also have money available to us to help the community. Why wouldn't we do that? So do you plan to reach out to the FBI again, or do you want, are you want them to contact I, you? I left, it in the, I left it up to him. The last, I con last I talked to him, I told him what my concerns were about his objectivity in this case, and that I wanted him to take it to DC and, and remove himself from it. He said he would call me back. That was yesterday morning. Okay. I've not heard back. All right, well, anything else you'd like to add? No. Did we talk about everything? Yes. Okay.